I hope you find these segments helpful. If you need any more information or want to revise any part, let me know. The James Webb Space Telescope set off on a journey to the deepest parts of our solar system that had never been done before. It went to places on Pluto that no other spaceship had gone before, which was a big deal. The pictures the telescope sent back were amazing. They showed Pluto in ways that no one had ever seen it before. They showed the tallest mountains that would make you think, as well as beautiful slopes and old craters. And then there was Pluto's famously cold and icy heart, which scientists still don't understand. Why does NASA want to look at Pluto again with the James Webb Space Telescope, and how does this current study of Pluto make it possible for future trips to the farthest reaches of our solar system? Every new idea and piece of modern technology adds a new part to the story of our space exploration adventures. When we look back, it's clear that our space projects have come a long way since Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Even so, the vastness of the world and the fact that we still can't fully explain all of its mysteries keep showing us how much we need to learn. Here's where NASA's new projects and tools come in handy. The James Webb Space Telescope was sent into space to look at the beginning of the universe and find out about planets far away. Most importantly, this gear is a huge improvement over what NASA has already done. It's an epic journey to try to figure out the mysteries of the past in the universe. We're still interested in the Big Bang and how our solar system came to be, but what interests us most is finding a clear answer to the question of whether or not there is life on planets other than Earth. Could what we learn about the solar system grow into a whole new field of study? Will the new information we get from the James Webb Telescope make us rethink what we think we know about the universe? These questions make us think about what we know now, especially what we know about Pluto and why we call it a small planet. We now know a lot more about Pluto thanks to the New Horizons mission and the amazing things it found. The billion-dollar investment has changed the way NASA works and helped us learn more about the icy world. Before the New Horizons mission, we didn't know much about the surface of Pluto. The Hubble Space Telescope took the clearest picture of Pluto's surface in 2002. It showed a strange mix of colors, including orange, white, and black, as well as a bright spot that scientists found interesting. Pluto research was like trying to answer a puzzle with only a few jumbled pieces because the Hubble Space Telescope could only show so many details. After that, the James Webb Space Telescope showed up. It went into orbit around Pluto and took some beautiful pictures that helped scientists learn a lot more about that world. It was like getting a backstage pass to a magic show and finally being able to see all the cool things that had been hidden from us. Scientists were amazed by these pictures, but they also caught the attention of people all over the world. It made a lot of people interested in and passionate about the unknown places beyond our solar system. The main goal of the New Horizons mission was reached in July 2015. The spaceship flew by Pluto and its many moons and sent back to Earth the first detailed pictures of this object in space. Today has turned out to be a big step forward in the search for life in space. Astronomers learn new things about Pluto and its moons that they didn't know before. The New Horizons mission's success gave NASA more ways to study the huge Kuiper belt. They did this because they knew they needed to learn more about faraway celestial bodies right away. It was NASA's goal to find planets between Neptune's orbit and about 50 astronomical units, AU, from the Sun. The closest flyby with Pluto and Charon, Pluto's largest moon, was without a doubt the most interesting part of the journey. New Horizons also took clear pictures of Pluto's four other moons, which are called Nix, Hydra, Kerberos, and Stex. It took 15 months to gather all the data, but by October 25, 2016, the goal had been met. It was successful for the spaceship to gather 6.25 gigabytes of useful data. But why is this huge amount of data important for NASA's study of the dwarf planet? The results of the New Horizons mission were so different from what experts had seen before that they had to make new high-tech data models to figure out what they meant. Over time, 
it became clear that Pluto's surface and atmosphere changed dramatically, which was different from what was first thought. Even after being reclassified as a dwarf planet, Pluto showed that it was a living thing. It changed so quickly that NASA had to reevaluate and change what they thought they knew about this interesting space object. The high-definition shots that NASA takes of Pluto show many interesting things about this very far away dwarf planet. Pluto has a heart-shaped area called the Tomba Regio or Heart of Pluto. This geological event, which scientists called the Sputnik Planitia, is a major force in shaping many of Pluto's surface traits. To my surprise, this heart-shaped area is not warm and beating. Instead, it is cold, icy, and almost frozen. Indeed, it's a huge area of nitrogen ice that covers more than a million square miles. The fact that this huge nitrogen iceberg is at the center of Pluto is very important. It causes something called true polar wander, which moves the planet's spin axis. Scientists didn't know that Pluto's heart-shaped basin is right next to its biggest moon, Charon, until NASA's mission. This change in Pluto's orientation has interesting effects, especially on the link between Pluto and Charon. In simple terms, the fact that Pluto's heart-shaped basin lines up with the tidal axis between Pluto and Charon says that the heart has an effect on how the planet is oriented. It means that Pluto has tipped a little on its axis because of the pull of gravity between Pluto and Charon and the location of the Sputnik Planitia. This new information helps us understand why Pluto is such an interesting and changing place. Even though people can't live on Pluto, its icy surface and huge nitrogen ice at its center give it some unique features. This includes the fact that it tends to tilt because its mass isn't balanced. Because Pluto is so big and has many moons, their gravitational poles can cause something called true polar wander. This is when a planet lines up its axis of spin with a better orbit. That being said, the thick ice sheet by itself isn't enough to cause such a big change in direction. Even though Pluto's huge ice glaciation adds to its mass, it is not the only thing that causes the small planet to tilt or experience strong tides. Scientists have been able to learn more about Pluto thanks to recent advances in technology. They have made an amazing discovery. Pluto has a sea hidden beneath its icy surface that we didn't know about. This is a groundbreaking finding because it goes against everything scientists thought they knew about the planet's structure and history. The discovery that Pluto has an ocean changes how we think about this faraway moon, putting it in the same group of watery moons as Titan, Enceladus, and Europa around the Sun. Even though there is no proof that life could exist in Pluto's ocean right now, the fact that it might makes us wonder if life could exist in other planets oceans this finding makes it more important to study and find watery worlds in our solar system and makes us think about life beyond earth nasa also says that extraterrestrial life is still a possibility even though there isn't any solid proof another important thing that nasa's cassini mission found was an ocean full of phosphorus below the cold surface of enceladus a moon of Saturn that orbits around it. Since phosphorus is needed to make DNA and RNA, which are parts of the molecular basis of life, this discovery has led to endless discussions about the chance of life on other planets. Even though Enceladus is still a possible astrobiological target for space study, figuring out if Pluto is habitable is much trickier. When it comes to Pluto, Things are different because the imaging gear is advanced enough to take clear shots of its surface, but not advanced enough to test whether it could support life. Since we still don't know the exact chemical makeup of Pluto's underground water, we can't learn more and say for sure if Pluto is a good place for life. NASA is still spending money to learn more about icy planets like Pluto, but right now there is no way to figure out how much nitrogen is in Pluto's sea. But this doesn't mean that understanding Pluto is less important. The planet can help us learn about many areas of planetary science, from its geological traits to how it formed and how it has changed over time. Every new finding helps us learn more about the solar system and makes us more interested in the idea of life beyond Earth. When we look more closely at the high-resolution pictures of Pluto, 
we find many hidden traits, some of which may surprise you. One of these finds is a lake that is about 20 miles, 32 kilometers, wide, and is tucked away in a mountain range just west of Pluto's famous heart. This strange liquid seems to have frozen now, but there are hints all over the dwarf planet's surface that it may have once been a lake that flowed and was full of an unknown material. It is even more amazing that Pluto has a lake because it is so cold there, with temperatures as low as minus 230 degrees C, minus 382 degrees F. It's not clear what the liquid was made of for sure, but experts think it might have been liquid nitrogen. People think that liquid nitrogen may have carved out riverbeds and complex gullies billions of years ago, creating the beautiful scenery in the picture. It's because Pluto's surface temperatures and pressures change all the time that liquid nitrogen can pool and flow on a world so far from the sun. I hope you find these segments helpful. If you need any more information or want to revise any part, let me know.